1967 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport by AMT Ertl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? Hello once again GM fans and welcome back to another unboxing video as today we look at the 1967 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport by AMT Ertl. This is one of the first issues of this great kit and it was also made in the golden era of when AMT was competing against Tamiya Japan for making up the best model kits ever for full detail and everything. So if you love these great reviews, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a video, you are one of the first to see it. And now without further ado, uh, let's continue looking at our great Chevy Impalas. As you know, I've been collecting a lot over the years, and this one is no exception. So let's go down to our GM showroom, open up the lid and see what's in the box. A major restyle gave 1967 full-size Chevrolets an artful blend of creases, bulges and curves. Interiors were more luxurious than ever and roomier too, thanks to new swept back instrument panel that opened up extra leg and knee room in front. Engine options ranged up to a new 427 V8 with stout 385 horsepower. And that is exactly what AMT Ertl gives us in this amazing 1967 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport model kit. This kit came out in 1997 on that great curve when AMT Ertl was trying to match quality and styling and model kit experience with Tamiya Japan and of course Ravel Monogram. So let's take a look at the side of the box here. We get quite a bit of detail going on in the explanation. Just bring that up. We get a rear wheel drive two door hardtop with a 427 cubic inch engine, four speed planetary gearbox with a torque converter, rally wheels, Firestone wide ovals, hood louvers, circular instruments placed for easy readability, over 100 parts, full color decals, paint and cement is of course not included. And here we've got a picture of the real car on the side of the box. Should you need any assistance, there's the old number for customer service. I don't know if it's going to help you anymore. <laughs> Since AMT is now part of round two, there's the side of the box. And then here we actually get some real pictures of the real car. So just bring this up again. There's the view from the rear. The rally wheels with the red line tires in there. Red wall tires, I guess. The detailed interior and the real 427 cubic inch V8 molded or painted in Chevrolet engine red or orange. So just turn this around this way. Open up the lid on this beauty. And of course we have our instruction sheet. Bought at Canadian Superstore, that's a grocery store, December 5th, 1998. There's our body in the box. Nice detailing on it. We'll take a look at that in a minute. The interior components. Separate molded body sides for the interior. Door panels. The hood and ARs. Then we got our frame here, pardon me, and our under chassis decal sheet. Interesting, I've never seen a decal sheet black on the back. And then we've got engine components, and more engine components and firewalls and dashboard and all that kind of goodness. Exhaust pipes. Chrome, the glass, tires, and rear taillights. So let's just move all this out of the way and start looking at our gray components. I actually got a little excited there for a review. What we need to look at first is our instructions, of course. And again, bought at the Canadian Superstore. Do any of you out there write on the top of your instruction sheets like this where you bought the model and all that? 
Just kind of curious, or is it just me? I haven't done that recently, though. <laughs> anyway, you get the backstory of the model here, or the real car, as well as a nice photograph of the real car on here. So how does that relate to the plastic model? Well, let's just take a look as we go back here on our instructions. It's the big fold out. Read this before you begin. Well, I'm not going to read it, so let's just go straight into the review here. Anyway, no, you should read that. It tells you how to do your model. Okay, so here we have our engine. Again, you've got your right and left engine block with the transmission molded on. The cylinder head, and it's nice it has the valve rockers on the top here. Then you've got your intake manifold with a coil molded on. It says to paint it all Chevrolet engine orange. Cylinder head, front cover, and your oil filler and filter and oil pan is one piece. You just move this down a little. You can see the engine block with the carburetor going on there. The distributor, the starter motor, and the fan belts. This also has the alternator with the bracket, which is another good thing. There's our engine with the air cleaner and the chrome valve covers going on there. Exhaust manifolds, and it says to paint them cast iron gray. It's nice it has the painting right underneath of the, uh, the parts. There's your fan as well, going into those fan belts and pulleys. Getting into our next panel here, we've got our chassis assembly. And what is nice is the full perimeter frame that they give you in here. Then you've got your coil springs and your right and left lower control arms. You've got the full suspension here, and this one's nice because you can actually make this have posable steering. Very easy. They give you everything right there. Then, of course, we've got our steering linkage, the springs, the lower left A arms, the differential cover down here. little fight with the instructions. You got your frame and the yeah the differential and all that going in. You also have your floor pan here, your engine, the drive shaft, everything. Then here we get a nice chart. This is the color availability, the exterior colors, and what would be painted on the interior. There's our instrument panel, the dashboard, showing you how to paint it all. There's a gauge cover, a clear plastic gauge cover going on in here. Let's just bring this up into the camera. You get your right and left interior door panels, your seats, your console, all this great stuff. And then the interior going together there. Our next panel shows the exhaust system assembly left and right exhaust pipes. There are uh, two pieces. And then we get our body assembly going on here with the glass and your mirror. The rear tail lights popping through this nice chrome bumper in the back, as well as windshield wipers, which is always nice. This panel here shows, of course, the front uh, going on and the body going into your assembled chassis and everything. Then we get our wheel and tire assembly. This of course has the blank in here, so you have to cut that out of the tire. You got your wheel backs, your front brake hubs going in there, and then the tire and your sports rally wheel. And then finally, the last panel shows the whole thing going together with the wheels being assembled, the hood with the chrome insert and the chrome trim, and your 427 decal going on your air cleaner as well as your license plates. So overall, a really nice instruction sheet. And now let's go down and look at the gray components. Now we're going to look at the body of our 1967 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport. And as you can see, it is quite a long car. It's got some neat stuff in there, like all this detail in the fender aprons here, as well as the vent with the windshield wipers. 
and it's even got a hood latch here so that's pretty cool body looks quite crisp and clean very good casting right there typical GM door locks on here nice and smooth there is a four-door on the market of this car it just came out within uh, 2020 very nice <clears throat> of course the two-door is quite nice too if we turn it over you can see that it's sunken a little bit in here so that the glass will have a perfect fit into the body there's of course four little pegs for mounting the front and rear windshield in but again it was nice that AMT of this era actually sunk the glass in because some of the earlier stuff the glass just never seems to match up right there are a few mold marks on the top of the roof in here which could easily be removed with your number 16 hobby blade and again a nice perfect effort from AMT Ertl. Of course following the body we have the chassis floor pan assembly and as we look at the top we can see you've got the carpet molded in, the gas pedal as well as the little rubber in here to protect your feet from going through the carpet at that point, your shoes. <laughs> nice little uh, box here for the um, seats to fit in and then an area for the rear bench seat fits in there and as we turn this over you can see the great detail in here there's a big fuel cell and then of course all the ridges and everything for the floor pan really nice work there are some little clips here at the back that go into the body hold it all together into place but again here look at all the nice detail let's turn it over again you can see the floor pedal and the little L brackets here <laughs> for mounting your seats in. So again, really very a nice, nice interior and chassis pan. And then none of this could be mounted on the vehicle without the frame. And they give you a full perimeter frame, which is typical of the bigger cars from GM. Again, a lot of beautiful work on here. Not too much on the uh, mold marks, a couple in there, which could easily be taken out with a bit of sandpaper or that <laughs> famous number 16 hobby blade. Then as we turn it underneath, you can see there's a lot of little holes on the frame. That, of course, is for mounting items like upper control arms, the springs, exhaust pipes, all kinds of stuff. Got the bracket for the transmission sitting there as well as in the rear you got your coil spring area so again very nice just bring it up into the camera here you can see all the the goody bits of it yeah definitely just like the real car for our first parts tree we have the hood the upper a arms the front anti sway bar the coil springs the lower A arms, the steering linkage, the rear anti sway bar, and here we have da -da -da, the upper control arms for the rear axle. Next up, we have the front exhaust pipes. We also have the rear differential and the differential cover and the drive shaft. So I kind of forgot to bring up the parts to the camera on the last sprue. So we just take a quick look here. You can see the nice detail on that differential, just like the real one from GM. Bunch of holes in the back for lining all the spring and anti-sway bar components, as well as it's got an, a little notch on there for the back of the cover so that you know which way it's supposed to go. And there's the notch there. So it's this is mounted sideways. And not much detail on the exhaust pipes but still it does have the proper brackets in there which is nice and these long pins to mount it up through the chassis so again quite a lot of nice detail and fit and finish from this AMT kit now this parts tree has a lot of the under the hood details including the dashboard here which doesn't go under the hood <laughs> but the rest of it all does so you've got your engine block with your transmission you also have the cylinder holes molded in there there of course is your cylinder heads your radiator hoses your front engine covers timing chain covers 
your exhaust manifolds, the oil pan, uh, starter motor, battery, alternator with the bracket, the belts and pulleys, the fan, the fan shroud, the firewall, the radiator with support, and of course the aforementioned firewall. So let's take a look at this up close into the camera. Now you can see the nice detail. You got your rocker arms on the top. Underneath, there's not much there, but still, Underneath is kind of boring. Let's turn it back over. <laughs> it's the exhaust manifolds. I mean, look at the... They've got all the uh, the bolts in there. Battery. I believe this is a side mount. And there, there's the alternator. I mean, look at the nice detail on the firewall. Got all your little motors and stuff for the blower and whatnot. Nice work, nice work and detail by AMT. Look at the dashboard. This was when AMT was at the cream of the crop, making the best of the best. Radiator is nice, you could turn that over. A couple of mold marks, but you know, the radiator gets painted flat black, so maybe we can paint over that and no one would see. It is up under the hood anyway. So again, more nice detail from this era of AMT. And our next parts tree has a mixture of different components to it. You have the rear exhaust pipes here, with of course little brackets on there. Your air cleaner, your steering wheel, the valve covers, the rear springs, the distributor, the carburetor, the front spindles, shock absorbers, and then some of the arms for your transmission. Oh, your differential, pardon me. The, your intake manifold and some wires and things here. Possibly for air conditioning. So let's just bring this up to the camera again. Look at the nice detail. You can see the coils and the carburetor. All this stuff would look good with some dry brushing, painting, what have you. Turning it over. Not too many problems. For mold marks, of course, all that would be hidden as you glue these things together. But still, very nice again. Nice attention to detail. Here on this parts tree, we have the interior panels. And AMT of this era was generous enough to mold these flat and not like a tub, like some of the other kits that are older than this. Of course, this kit came out in 1997 when AMT was competing with Ravel and Tamiya of Japan for Best Model Awards. What's nice about this is you can see the great detail of the door handles and window winders. And of course, I have a real 70s GM door handle, which would be the type they used in the 60s as well. And you can see that this actually looks like it, even though this is the full size and this is 25th scale here. But still, the, the idea is that with the separate door panels, they can punch this thing to make it look perfect. So I'll just move this out of the way. And of course, here we have our rear bench seat. It has a little grill up here with the Impala logo and all the rest, as well as the rear package shelf. So let's just bring this up to the camera. Here, turn it this way. But yeah, you can see how great that is. I mean, look at the detail on that. That would get a lot of good uh, painting in there. The door handles look just like the real thing. I should take you out and show you my 72 Oldsmobile in one of these videos. Anyway, there is the bench seat. Again, quite nice, nice detail on there. Very accurate to prototype. So again, we've got to thank AMT of 1997 for producing such great, great model building injection molding bits. And our final gray parts tree contains the front bucket seats with the seat backs, as well as the little bits and pieces for mounting our wheels on. And what's interesting is here, these have a caliper mounted on them. So those are for your disc brakes up front. And then we have our drums in the back. And these actually look like the backs of drum brakes. It's too bad that the wheel goes around. Too bad that AMT didn't figure a way to make the back of your uh, differential cover plates here for your brake drums 
to actually be glued to the differential and have the wheel go around the outside, but maybe that was a bit too complicated. Anyway, you can't discredit them for the detail they put in here. And of course, these ones are smooth. That would be your disc brakes going in there, your disc brake rotors. So let's bring this up to the camera just to see how nice that is and see the uh, detail on the drum covers. And then there's your rotors there. So here we've got our seat backs, again with the same level of detail as the rear bench seat. And then there's the back of the buckets with a bit of a relief in here, which would be prototypical again. There's those drums I was, or uh, calipers I was talking about. And then you notice on this side it's smooth. So just turn that over and you can see how nice it is under here. Not much to remove, maybe a little bit of flash, not, not too bad couple of mold marks, but they're hidden by the seat backs, so you're doing fine. And that's a great bit. So now let's go over to see the chrome. And here it is, the chrome parts tree. In the future, everything is chrome. <laughs> to quote SpongeBob. So anyway, <laughs> here we've got the front grill, the nice SS Impala right there. And this, of course, would go good with your your uh, Nuln Oil or Flat Black Wash. There's the console, all in chrome. The little bit of trim that goes underneath the hood. And of course there's the insert for that hood. The windshield wipers, the rear view mirror. Not sure what that is, have to look it up. There's the rear bumper. And we've got those SS wheels sitting there, as well as the gear shift lever. So let's bring this up into the camera. You can see that nice detail. It also has the reliefs there for your headlights, which would be in clear plastic. There is the parking lamps. Yeah, very nice, very prototypical. You got reverse lights in those red tail lights, and then there'd be a red plastic going in here. Really cool. I like this. I like what AMT was doing to uh, try to upgrade back in the day should redo this get those guys back from the original team or get new guys that can do this i don't know anyway there's all your wheels and everything so again nice crisp detail fresh the chrome is beautiful on this nicely plated so there we go with the chrome and here we have our glass components there was an interesting piece right here. I wasn't sure what it was, so I had to look it up. But that is to cover the instrument panels. It's a gauge cover, just like the real car had. Nice, clear piece of plastic. So that is a really cool feature from AMT that wasn't really expected. Anyway, here you got your front windshield, and of course there's those four mounting holes, and the rear tail glass. And you can see that it actually bulges up on here, so you get a nice tight fit into the windshield frame. And then we've got our four little headlights for your quad headlights. And then there's the red plastic on the rear tail lamps. So let's just bring this up to the camera again, because that's my favorite thing to do. Actually, you can't really see too much. Well, there we go. But yeah, you can see there's, see how it's lifted up? This is just like going into frames on glasses, which is a, you know, really nice technique considering the other flat panels that we've seen, like say in the, uh, 1967 Camaro review. Uh, there's your headlights there. Nice detail on them. Always remember that the mesh has to go like horizontal and vertical. I eh? can't have it at an angle is what I'm trying to say. There's that uh, panel for your gauges. And then again the windshield. And you can tell that this is relieved again just like wearing glasses to fit into that frame. Sorry for the bounce. Let's just move this out of the way and bring up our little red components here. Again, nice detail. It's got the uh, reflective spin in there, you know, molded in place. And this, of course, is sunken down so it will fit flush into the bumper and bring the rear, rear red taillights up to the front of that bumper. So again, very nice attention to detail from this era of AMT. And what would be a car without good rolling stock? And here we have nice rubber tires. These are brand new for the era. 
and they still are a very nice tire. These, of course, are Firestone Wide Oval Super Sports, which were new and exciting. And they have the little ridge in here as well, so that you can paint in a white wall or a red wall into there, or even blue. Well, maybe not blue. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, look at these. Nice new tread pattern on them, which was very prototypical for the actual tires. And of course we have our raised lettering on there as well. So again, very, very nice work and attention to detail from AMT of 1997. And here's the final bit of our model kit. Of course, I'm referring to the decal sheet. And you get two wonderful license plates from Iowa from 1967 and Kansas from 67 as well. One is SS427, the other is TB427. The 427, of course, referring to the engine. And here's the air cleaner decal for your 427 right there. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 67 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport Model Kit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this exciting episode of Monster Hobbies What's in the Box, where we got to look at the AMT Ertl 1967 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport. And wasn't that a great kit? And if you like these videos, once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a video, you are the first to see it. And tune in next week as we open up another 1967 model kit. Until next time, keep chasing that Impala!